So today we're going to be looking at the Fractal Design Node 202. It's a relatively small form factor case, although I say relatively because it's more like long and skinny than it is overall small case. Um, if, you, if you're old enough to be around for the days of early VCR or early DVD players, you kind of get the size we're talking about here. It's kind of more akin to that size, which is actually perfect because this is going to go inside an entertainment center. It's going to be used for PC gaming on the couch stuff like that. So let's take a look at it. So when we pull it out of the box, you kind of realize pretty quickly that it's really hefty for its size. It's very well built, pretty solid. This is not a, a lightweight case for any means of the imagination. It also comes with a weird little stand um, because it's kind of too thin to be placed on its side without the stand. It's, it's a little bit, it would probably fall over. Um, the stand itself is okay, but honestly sort of cheap feeling and uh, it looks kind of cheap compared to the rest of the case. I was kind of surprised about that. It kind of seems like the general message here is that, you know, okay, well, if you want to sit it up on its side, you can. Ultimately, this is kind of designed to sit flat on its bottom slash side, whatever. So we can go ahead and take a look at the front of the case now. There's nothing too crazy to write home about here. You get two USB 3.0 ports, headphone and mic jack, and then the one power button. There's no reset button or anything, um, but the overall design aspect, aesthetic of this case I really like. It's very minimal. I just really like the look of the whole thing. And uh, since the case is rather compact, there's going to be a lot of venting, as you do, right? And the, there's one long vent along the side here, or is it the top? Either way, it's one of those. It doesn't have a filter on it, but I guess the kind of idea here is that this is, quote, the exhaust primarily, so you shouldn't have too much air being drawn through it. We'll see how that goes. And then up here on the top, we have a vent or the side, either way. We have the power supply vent, which is filtered, and then we also have this uh, GPU um, vent, which spans like the whole length of where a GPU would be just to kind of make the most the make the most of the space right so you can have a short gpu a long gpu any anything in that rough area will be covered and then when we look at the other side uh, we have a cpu vent on the top if we look at the rear of the case you can see obviously a standard io cutout for the motherboard and then a full height pci slot that's on its side and we'll get to how that connects up later, but if you see a lot of these SFX small form factor type cases, you know that it's basically a PCI riser that goes up and over, and then the graphics card sits on its side, sort of next to the motherboard. But you get it. And then you see the power plug for the PSU here, which is remotely mounted towards the front of the case. And then this, this cable comes to the back where you plug it in. So let's uh, take the top off, see what we got going on inside. This is pretty easy once you actually know how to work it. You just take four bolts off of the bottom of the case. And then you desperately fumble around, not understanding how the top comes off. Then you open up the manual, which you probably should have done in the first place. and figure out that the uh, top comes off after the bolts on the bottom come out. Yeah, that, that, that was a fumble on my part there. Once we've got the top off, you can see that uh, we got a, a box of bits, which is mostly just black screws, black zip ties, and stick on rubber feet. So uh, I guess we'll just go ahead and put them on while we're while we're talking about it don't block these screws though um, those are kind of absolutely necessary when you need to take it apart and put it back together you need those screw holes next to the feet you can kind of put them wherever you want uh, they don't really show you exactly so just try hard and believe in yourself and uh, put them wherever you feel they should go
that's kind of the gist of the case itself. And this video is going to be kind of long past this point, so if you're just wanting to see kind of an overview of the what it looks like, you can stop right here and not complain about the video being long. The rest of this is going to be me building the computer in a case and uh, just the struggles maybe that I ran into through the process. That being said though, this case is good. Like it's it's built it's well built. The cable management's decent for how big it is, and ultimately this is gonna work for what you probably need if you're looking for something to sit in the living room on an entertainment center or whatever. I don't know that I recommend it sitting up vertically, although it's it's designed for that. You could definitely use it that way. I'm not gonna use it that way, but you certainly could if you wanted to. Alright, so if you're still watching, buckle up. We're going to talk about the rest of this. So, the weird thing that you see first on this case when you start building in it is that this hard drive cage, it like straddles the central frame rail. And so you got to pull that out, which is easy enough to do. You just un undo a screw and slide it out. Um, but then the hard drives sort of like face each other and they need to be kind of slim because the, the center rail is quite big. Um, most SSDs, totally fine. If you're going to, uh, if you need a mechanical drive for some reason, I opted for a really thin uh, Seagate Momentus drive for this purpose, and it's like a, I think it was a one terabyte drive or somewhere in that range. And this is the computer that I already had in another case. I was transferring into this one since it didn't fit in my entertainment center. <laughs> so this is the hard drives I already had. SSDs are probably preferable in this format. So just, just so you know. Um, installing the motherboard, pretty easy overall, but I want to point out two things. First of all, the cooler you see in this particular part of the video did not ultimately fit, and I had to swap it out later. Otherwise, installing the motherboard is really easy, and if you get something like the Scythe Shuriken or something like a Noctua NHL9A, those things will fit just fine. It seems to be about a hard limit somewhere around 56 millimeters, just so you know. And uh, you can also get a couple extra millimeters out of it if you're willing to remove the vent filter that's above the uh, CPU area. So next we move on to connecting up the front panel, and this is pretty much like every other case. I didn't really go into too much detail on this. My only real gripe is that the three, the USB 3 connector is really, really tall because it's the standard one, and it practically hits the lid when you put the case back together, which is kind of insane, but it's also pretty standard. Uh, props to Fractal Design here, though, but because we have some extra cable management loops that go to that side of the case, which is quite nice and well appreciated even in a tiny case like this. So next we're going to look, for, look at this rigid PCIe uh, riser. Which, I mean, there's a bunch of these and they exist everywhere, but I've never really personally dealt with any that aren't a ribbon cable with a socket on the end. I actually kind of liked this one ultimately, but I can't really say if it's better or worse. It was pretty easy to connect though. The first half just snaps into the motherboard and then you bolt it to the case with three screws. And then after that, you can sort of connect the spacer through this pass-through in the case. And then you're done, really. The GPU just slots right in after that. Though installing the GPU is a little bit annoying, right? Because either my reading comprehension is very poor, or I just missed something in the instruction manual initially, where you have to pull the back side of the case off and get to this tiny little wedge that holds the GPU off the board.
also just a quick caution i broke this little light diffuser thing off the case when i was trying to get the back off the the piece of plastic that the light diffuser is on and the metal frame of the chassis they're too close together so and the the little plastic welds on mine were too weak so as soon as i like just as soon as those two things passed by each other it snapped it right off but um a little epoxy and uh, some cursing later and it's back in and it works just fine so that's that's okay so after the after the trauma that i went through of removing the bottom of the case uh, you can also see that this is where the fan filters are and um, that's kind of like really my one big complaint about this case is that the filters are on the bottom and you have to basically shell the entire case to get them off so they're easy to remove once you literally peel all of the you know all of the sides off which is a little bit of a problem ultimately maybe you just don't touch them and you just leave them in place but they're basically held on with magnets so once you do get to this point you can just peel them off so once we start putting things back together i kind of remembered the ram and i just want to mention that i had to get some low profile ram to clear this low and wide cpu cooler that's kind of such as life with these builds you know you either make it tall or you make it wide and quite frankly that's just kind of how it goes So I started installing all the cables after uh, that tragedy of installing some RAM, and that, that went pretty easily. It's kind of easier to cable manage as you go in these builds because they're just so small and it's hard to get to everything. My cable management is okay. You don't really see much of it, so it's fine. Next we're going to go ahead and reinstall that front panel that I removed. This isn't really in order, but you get the point. You have to kind of screw this front panel back in. It, it has to be removed pretty much if you want to get the back of the case off, unless you want to break stuff. So that pretty much is that. Next I installed the power supply and it was a pretty straightforward affair. It just mounts to this cool little bracket and the bracket slides into place and bolts on. Really quite simple. My personal tip, don't use the Seasonic SGX500 for this case. The plug is just too close to the edge of the unit and it's sort of oriented the other way. So I had to bend this wire that runs to the front of the case a little bit too much for my liking, but it's, you know, it is what it is, right? <laughs> you can't really do much about that. So also just a real quick clip of me installing the heatsink for the CPU. Not a lot of space left, <laughs> let me tell you, but uh, it, it went in pretty easily. It looks fine. And uh, then just bolt the, back, bolt the two halves back together and admire the finished product. So pardon the dust here in my final location, but uh, I just wanted to get a quick clip of it sitting in an entertainment center. And uh, there was a lot of dust. I tried to clean some of it off, but it's just... The camera really picks it up way better than the eye for some reason. So I mean, I don't have a specific set of temps on hand, but this machine just works for gaming. I've been playing like, play some Halo, Binding of Isaac on it, seems fine. It doesn't seem to be hitting any thermal limits, although I'm sure it's quite warm. The case is relatively cool to the touch when it's running under load for a while, so maybe it's not too bad. I didn't really measure it though. I you know it's it's a small form factor case so the heat is going to be a situation that you're going to have to live with but this seems to have enough ventilation that it's not really a problem so any questions or comments leave those below <laughs> these cases are really hard to sort of review and I'm, I'm sort of trying my best so let me know if uh you have any input on that 
talk to you guys later.